of today, which has been a really interesting day of, uh, of uh, talks, is a round table on the key um, question of today, really, which is, is Jaina philosophy compatible with the modern sciences? And uh, up here we have a very distinguished panel. Um, and I think the procedure we're going to have is um, each one will just very briefly introduce themselves and uh, give a two minute, just only two minutes, um, general view of, that they have on the question of whether Jane philosophy is compatible with modern sciences. And then what we will do is we will make it a little bit like question time and come to the audience. And uh, if you can now think about any questions that you might want to ask um, to the panel, and we'll take that question and discuss it. And what I might do is take two or three questions to begin with, and then we'll, we'll choose which question to, to debate. So put your thinking caps on and think about uh, what you want to hear. Um, but uh, let's go one by one. I, I'll introduce myself. I'm Shamal Chandaria. I'm uh, mainly uh, uh, on the science side, so uh, with a background in physics, and I now work in neuroscience, uh, theoretic physics. And so I'm going to take a slightly skeptical view uh, today, which is that uh, I think that it's, it's, it's not always the case that a lot of Jain philosophy is compatible with modern science. It's too easy to say yes, yes. Uh, you know, what, quantum mechanics was discovered 2,500 years ago, and we can see Heisenberg, we can see uh, Schrodinger's equation in this uh, schlock and things like that. Uh, so I will be taking a much more um, a view of a metaphor and analogy, um, and we'll, we'll see how it is. So why don't we go one by one, and maybe if you can introduce yourself and your research back, uh, your research interests, and Does then... it make sense to start at the other end so that I may... Think about Respond. it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, j j just, just your research interests, your name, and then and and what your thoughts are for two minutes, and then we'll go one by one. Okay. Uh, Jay Janendra, pranam everyone. Um, my name is uh, Mukul, Dr. Mukul Shah. Um, I'm medical um, by background. I would say I'm first and foremost a Jain, and secondary a doctor. Um, with the question, I would say that they are compatible, uh, Jainism and science, to a degree. But I would actually argue the other way and talk of a few instances where Jainism supersedes science. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Bhak ते करता छूते मारो प्राण प्रभु जी एवं मांगू रहे जन्मो जन्म तारो साथ प्रभु जी एवं मांगू that's a reference to the last lecture of the day, but also the fact that science can only deal with the tangible. Spirituality can deal with the intangible, and the difference is spirituality deals with the things that science has not yet been able to prove. We heard earlier about 118 elements of the periodic table that have been discovered by science, and the theory that there are 200. That's one example. From my professional background as a doctor, the last lecture was very close to my heart. Um, palliative care is a speciality of medicine that over the last 20 years, you'll find more and more papers on it. Over the last 50 years, modern medicine has found ways to keep people alive for longer and longer and longer. But as medicine advances even more than over the last 20 years, it has found that it's the quality of death is arguably more important than just keeping people alive. And Jainism has said that 
this from the very, very start. And it's one, just one of many examples of where science is only just catching up with Jainism. And in the question and answers, I'm happy to expand on several other similar examples that in my personal practice and personal reading, I personally um, can talk about. Would you like to say next? Just, just introduction. Just a two-minute introduction uh, to your uh, interest and, and what you think about the basic question of this panel, which is, uh, is Jain a philosophy compatible with modern science? Hey, I'm uh, Samani Unnath Pragya, and uh, that would be my introduction. In context of this Jainism and uh, science, I, I would just give a, a comment or a thought which I carry and I think is important. Uh, in the morning session, we had this um, question came up about God particle, right? Um, some of you might have been here, some might have not been here. The theory of God particle, which comes up in science, the word God is really captivating, and people start, like, who believe in God would start thinking, wow, you know, science is coming closer to our faith and belief system. But what theory, what complexities, what mathematics, what science has gone behind creating the statement that there is a God particle? Can you think of that? So if we start comparing that God particle should exist somewhere in atomic theory of Jainism, does the same complexity which the same mechanics, the same process exist behind the atomic theory of Jainism as well? So when we uh, make any claim or we make uh, any comparison, I think we should be very careful behind the complexes of both. I mean, it's the same even for the other way around. Like now quantum mechanics is starting, has started talking about consciousness. Um, I think, I don't remember the name, but there are physicists who have started talking about consciousness. Now, when they talk about consciousness, people who believe in consciousness might really enjoy this theory, but then that consciousness, what they are talking about, could be actually not a non metaphysical I mean, is, need not be a metaphysical consciousness, might be a physical consciousness. So words are captivating, and they, we are trying to kind of compare and stand parallel. I don't mean to say that there is nothing parallel or there is nothing uh, common in these different uh, fields, but uh, just for the sake of passion of seeing both together or marry, uh, we shouldn't ignore the complexes behind that. I mean, thank you. Great, thank you. Yes, I'm Ratna Kumar Shah from Pune. I began my career as a professor in mathematics for one year only, then joined as an insurance executive for 35 years. Again, after retirement, 10 years as a consultant in insurance only, and only at the age of 70, I entered the research area in uh, mathematics and Jainism. But I firmly believe that uh, the scope of knowledge, the arena of knowledge is constantly increasing. And that the modern science also is coming to some sort of compromise with the religious ideas. Uh, but uh, I'm also convinced <coughs> that there are a lot of lacunas in our religious ideas also, as well as in the scientific ideas also. And there should be an attempt to uh, to synchronize them, uh, to realign them. Without the microscope, without the telescope, without all this uh, experimental experimentation, etc., our people had some ideas, our acharyas have some ideas due to contemplation, intuition, etc., and they are really very relevant to even the modern scientific ideas. Only two examples I will give. The ideas of infinities in mathematics, in Jaina mathematics, are very similar to Cantor's theory of uh, multitude of infinities, hierarchy of infinities. Second idea, the probabilistic ideas in Jainism are coming very close to the quantum mechanical ideas, quantum probabilities. For example, which Nicholas 
uh, come out of the that sea of Nigoda. It, they say it's probability. It is swabhav. So uh, means it is probability. If there is no explanation, we say it is swabhav. We, ours is a hundav uh, sarpini. That means it is a sarpini, but of some different type. But why it is so? No, it is against swabhav. Sometime it may happen, sometime it may not happen. There are so many examples I can give, but I am not. So definitely, the, there is a need to marriage of scientific ideas, modern scientific ideas, and also some intuitive ideas of our uh, great acharyas. I firmly believe in that. Myself, Dr. Anupam Jain, student of mathematics and teaching mathematics since last 36 years and presently uh, engaged in the several administrative responsibilities like principal, controller examination, controller price, etc. But my basic interest is Jaina School of Mathematics. It is my opinion that Jain philosophy is compatible to modern science. The, the main problem is the knowledge of technical terms. For example, in Panchastik Aya of Kundukund, Avakavi words come clearly, Saptabhangi and Avatavi is mentioned, but the modern probability, we do not clearly understand what is the meaning of Avaktavita. In the same fashion, the theory of karma and the Inyaya Granthas, the theory of logic is same as the mathematical logic, but the problem is to understand the technical terms and correct interpretation. A lot of formulae developed by the Jain scholars is still in use in the modern mathematics, especially in the field of algebra, arithmetic, and geometry, not in the modern science. The development of the set theory is made by the Jain scholars. Therefore, I can say that Jain philosophy is compatible to modern mathematics. I am Dr. Kalyan Gangwal. I am here as a Shravak, follower of Jainism, because this is a mathematical conference and I am not a scholar in mathematics at all. But I am a Shravak, follower of the Jainism from the birth. I don't take even water after sunset. So as a Shravak, I am taking a participation. For the last 43 years of my practice, I am practicing cardiologist, two big institutes in Kepuna. KM Hospital and Pune Hospital, I am working as a cardiologist, as a postgraduate teacher in medicine, and here I am very happy to be with you all. Now, the basic thing today, since morning we are discussing about Einstein, Einstein, you must have read about the one interview of Einstein. Once a question was asked to the, uh, Einstein that, do you believe in rebirth? Einstein replied that, well, there is no proof, scientific proof for rebirth, so I don't believe. The next question was asked, if it is a rebirth, what you would react? He said, I would like to react in a fashion, the way he reacted, he said, I would like to have a birth in India and that too also in Jain religion. And that is exactly the Einstein's word, not my word. Even the same words you must have heard about Dr. Bernard Shaw. Bernard Shaw also, when he was interviewed by the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, he told that I would like to have a rebirth in Jainism. And that was a word of Bernard Shaw, who was a great lover of animals. I am working in a field of vegetarianism for the last 40 years, animal rights for 40 years, and also nonviolence. So I am practicing the Jainism, at the same time propagating the Jainism all over the world, even a lot of awareness we are creating about Selekna as a doctor, because as a doctor I feel that all the principles in our Jain religion are absolutely scientific. We call Jainism as a Vitrag Vigyan. Vigyan is a science word is there with us, and it is a Vitrag Vigyan, and that is the reason why we say that it is one of the most scientific religion I have ever come across. I am propagating the Jain lifestyle in our medical conferences and teaching them how you can live very healthy life with a Jain lifestyle, not eating after sunset, not eating after under roots. At the same time, a lot of following principles of 
lifestyle, and they are going to be accepted in the near future. I'm very positive about it, and there's a very, very positive reaction. As I told you, that Jainism is one of the religion which says that they have discussed about the global warming also. Our Acharya has also discussed about it. And today at the Paris conference, you must have read and heard that one way all the scientists are talking about is that vegetarianism is the only way to leave or attack the global warming. So reduce the global warming, you should have a large number of vegetarian population on the globe or on the earth. And that is one of the point which is our Jain religion, which is a scientific religion, talks about everything about the science. Even the Jain religion has practice in our Acharyas. Why we are talking about Acharyas? Because they were great scientists. They did the experimentation on their own body. They thought of it, it, the recent scientists, they are working in the laboratories and giving us a principles and giving a different laws and making this thing. But the, our all Rushis and Munis, Acharyas, were great scientists and they did the experimentation on their own. They reached a big, big level of their knowledge and they are from Mati Dhyan, Shruti Dhyan, Avadi Dhyan, and Manopraya Gyan, and then ultimately reached to the Keval Gyan. And when they reached the stage of Keval Gyan, they could appreciate and write everything. So here there is no question of take, taking the, uh, creating the confusion. We have everything. And at the stage of Keval Gyana, you can understand everything, what is the laws of nature. And today, the Jainism does not teach you anything but the laws of nature. And that is going to save our globe in the future. So today, I think in the discussion, I would like to invite your question because we are working for animal rights. We are making the Charter for Animal Rights for 21st century. And Dr. Vaswani from Pune is one of our leader who is having a global team where we are going to make rights about animal rights. And that is, I think, all the basic foundation we are taking it from Jain religion, how, what laws we should have for animals because the Jivadaya Ahinsa is a core of our Jainism, Jainism. So I would like to invite the questions on these issues, and I would love to talk to you on this. Great, thank you. I am Dr. Sanjeev Sukhani, man of chemistry, actually, organic chemistry. And I'm working in the industry for the last 30 years. So that's the effect of Jainism. You cannot see after looking at me that I may be working for 30 years in the industry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, and uh, you know, what I wanted to uh, give you from, Gyan, and I'm uh, working as a secretary with Gyan Saga Science Foundation, who is the co-sponsor of this uh, SOIS uh, conference. And uh, I'm very happy that this year we have chosen the topic of Chinese and science. And uh, you know, basically, you know, as I agree, that there is a compatibility of Chinese and science, and I agree with Anupam Ji also that we, it's the lacking of the <laughs> knowledge, probably, or the technical terms, which uh, has to be highlighted, and then, you know, to be doing the research on that topics, and then highlighted to the scientists of different categories, because I wonder sometimes why one Acharya can have everything, like, you know, one of the Acharya, Uma Swami, you must have heard, and you know, Jagdish Chand Vasu has given us that uh, vegetable or the tree has a life, and Jagdish Chand Vasu, but this, you know, Uma Swami has given 2,000 years back that Prathvi Kayak Jeev, Vanaspati Kayak Jeev, or Agni Kayak Jeev. So we have uh, Vayu Kayak Jeev, and I believe that yes, and the water is also Jeev. So these five jeeves has been defined uh, 2,000 years back, or maybe more than we know uh, from the Uma Swami Tatvarsut that this is defined there, but it may be beyond that also. So is the compatibility is what I'm talking is knowledge. I just give a very small example, you know, uh, which Acharya Ji gives is not very significant here, but maybe, you know, we should uh, appreciate that. Uh, one of the two ants, you know, very small ants, uh, were riding on the elephant, and elephant was uh, traveling through the bridge. I have some time, so uh, he was riding through the bridge, and bridge was old, and it's giving some noise. The ants starting saying that you know because of our weight, he's not able to walk through this bridge, mm -hmm. and they came. Uh, they also told the elephant also, and they came down. Somehow the uh, elephant has crossed over the bridge. 
So, you know, uh, it, it's, we are laughing that as she says, yes. Yeah, have you gone into airplane sometime? You, you are only 10,000 meter height and you see that you looks like ant there. And you say, okay, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. See, one yozan is 4,000 miles. And there are seven Raju, which you said, numerous of yozans we have heard. In the, so at that, sitting at that Siddhisila, if God sees you, you, will, you are like an ant, you know? And you say, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this physics, I've done this chemistry, I've done this mathematics. It's our knowledge which we have to, you know, take out and probably, yes, uh, uh, like, you know, it's fascinating that what science is doing this is being told uh, by our acharyas and I agree with uh, Shamaniji also that there's some good particle which is nothing but our soul and if you create your soul purify, it gives you infinite energy or infinite knowledge maybe and that is actually the laboratory and that is actually the science. Thank you. Gentlemen, I am Dr. L.C. Jain, retired as a professor of physics from MP Government Engineering Colleges, and that retirement was in 1998. 18 years have passed, and after retirement, I served as principal of some private engineering colleges, but after some years, I voluntarily left all those things because I was interested in our Jain literature and uh, all, all that, and therefore I studied some of the literatures. And my firm belief is that even if we take many births, we cannot understand the entire Jain scriptures. It is so voluminous, so uh, knowledge uh, providing. And one thing I want to tell that is about difference between knowledge and gyan. Knowledge is something different than gyan. We have in scriptures, it is given name mati gyan, shrut gyan, avadhi gyan, manai parya gyan, and then ultimately our siddh, our, our arhant, they get keval gyan. So after a lot of uh, tap, after a lot of religious followings, and all those things I have mentioned in my book, Jain Yoga Darpan, the science of salvation, the Jain Yoga, the science of salvation, I have published some paper, papers also, and I have written that book also. And it is my firm belief that if at all there is some lacuna in, in our uh, uh, scriptures that is not due to the wrong uh, uh, utterance by our Tirthankaras, but I think that after the uh, elephs of the Achar Parampara, some, uh, something might have been lost because uh, it, is, it was Gautam Gardhar who could uh, receive the knowledge given by Lord Mahavir but still, I, it is my belief that some uh, knowledge might have been uh, missed somewhere, and then when he passed it on to our next acharyas, uh, some loss of knowledge might have taken place. So that way, that lacuna is there. But ultimately, the Keval Gyani, the Arhant, has full knowledge of the entire world, and it is my full, firm belief that Jainism has more science contained, and it is not only compatible, but it is ahead of science. And lastly, as our Gangawal Sahib has said, the verse of Chaidala, written by Dolat Ramji, it says that, Teen bhuvan mein sar, vitraag vijyanta, shiv sarup shivkar, namahu taryog samhar ki. That means in the entire universe, the only substance truth is science of salvation. Let us bow to such science with whole mind, speech, and body. Thank you. I'm Johannes Bronckhorst. I'm a philologist and a cultural historian. I grew up in a Christian family. 
My father was a believing Christian. He was also a scientist. He was a chemist. And one of the questions that pursued him was, is Christianity compatible with science? And in his particular case, the problem lay especially with the creation of the world. The Bible has a story about how God created the world in six days, but of course evolutionary theory had something different to say. And my father was much preoccupied with that difference. And what he tried to do, and he read books of people who thought like him, that they would interpret the biblical story about the creation of the world in six days as an allegorical description of six geological periods. Well, I think that no one in this hall, unless there are any fundamentalist Christians here, would be convinced by that. The point is, what I invite you to think, you're mostly giants. Would anyone who's not a giant be convinced by any of your arguments? And I'm afraid not. I don't think you have much chance of convincing anyone who's not a giant of your present uh, thoughts about Jainism and science. In fact, the little we know about the appearance of science, a very miraculous event in the history of mankind, is that it was always linked, not with continuing a tradition, but with breaking away from tradition, all traditions. So that people who belong to traditions then start trying to think that their tradition, after all, is scientific, is predictable, is normal, my father did it for Christianity, you do it for Jainism, probably Muslims do it for Islam, everyone does it for his own tradition. But it is, I think, predictable, but it doesn't lead anywhere. You're not going to make any new scientific discovery by studying your Jain texts, as my father didn't make any scientific discoveries by studying the Bible. Um, I think that in the best of circumstances, this attempt to bring a particular tradition, Jainism, Christianity, you name it, in agreement with science is innocent and make, make you feel good. In the worst of circumstances, it will stand in the way. If you say, our texts say, this is how consciousness works, then, as you know, you probably disagree with much of that's going on in neuroscience. And if you still insist that your view has to prevail, and if you are a neuroscientist, your contribution may not be as great as it could be. So, I have a lot of sympathy for Jainism. That's one reason why I have studied it uh, in some detail. But I do not think that we should fall in the trap of trying to find in this tradition or in any other tradition what came about in science, which is a movement which managed to break away from traditions. Great, thank you for that. Thank you for